Good morning. The history of science changed at the very moment uh, when Galileo lifted a spyglass to observe the celestial bodies. The simple optical instrument composed of two glass pieces became the magical key to the universe. Later on, that simple device transformed into many things from Newton's reflective telescope to complex radio X-ray telescopes. We are familiar with the uh, uh, huge domes in high mountains which used to observe galaxies and other far away objects. Nowadays, numerous telescopes are, telescopes are pointed towards the sky to catch every single moment of the sky. Not only the surface of the Earth, but we also mount telescopes in the outer sky like Hubble. Another huge telescope, the James Webb Space, is now under construction. Today, our beloved speaker, Sri Arul Gerard Prakash, will take us with him on the journey through the story of the telescope. Incidentally, another celestial event is waiting for us on 21st of this month. It is called the Great Conjunction. On November 21, oh, sorry, on December 21, Jupiter and Saturn will be only 0.1 degrees apart. Some say the pair will look like an elongated star on that date. To know for sure, we will have to look and see. They will surely be an appealing and mind-expanding sight. Most of you are aware of the activities of Breakthrough Science Society. This is a national science organization that has presence in almost all the states in India. The society acts with uh, the motto, Science for Man, Science for Society, and Science in Thinking. To, to know more about us, I request you all to visit our website, breakthroughindia.org. If you are interested, interested and uh, want to join in our activities, welcome. You can apply for membership uh, through that website. I'm not going to elongate this introductory speech further. I know you all eagerly waiting to hear the story of Telescope. Let us hear that story from our beloved Sri Arul Jayar Prakash sir. Before that, I invite Srimadhi Suja Jayar, one of the district organizers of Breakthrough Science Society, to introduce our speaker. Yeah. Uh, good morning, good morning all. Uh, like uh, Shahadi sir mentioned, we are all here to attend uh, this webinar on the story of Telescope. And uh, this webinar is to be presented by Sri Arul Jaral sir, who is the former director of Kerala Science and Technology Museum. And uh, he was the director of uh, Kerala Science and Technology Museum for more than 12 years. And uh, he's also the former curator of Nehru Science Center, Mumbai. Um, he has more than 35 years of professional experience in design and development of uh, interactive exhibits and models. And during his time as the director, he has helped Breakthrough in many of its programs, and thank you, sir. Uh, his contributions and work with the help of um, uh, numerous science organizations uh, has succeeded in converting uh, KSSTM into a science hub. He has also designed many science exhibits and opened many galleries during his time as the director of uh, Kerala Science and Technology Museum. But I, I haven't yet had the opportunity to attend the uh, class before. And this will be the first time I'm attending one of his classes. And I'm sure that uh, it would be a wonderful one. And we all welcome you, sir, to deliver the class. And thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes. So good morning to all of you, especially the officials of the Breakthrough Science Society and the student participants and everyone present here. It's a nice time, actually. I'm really happy to see you all. Actually, I like Breakthrough Science Society for many of its activities. And my contact with Breakthrough Science Society is more than 20 years. Even after becoming director, actually, we were hand in hand doing the science propagation and science communication activities. And many of the office bearers actually, um, Sri Gobagumar, Sri Shaji Albert, and even actually um, our former state coordinator, my good friend, Bhatma Kumar, let me dedicate this talk to Sri Bhatma Kumar, who suddenly demise stand up, create a flutter, actually. Very nice person, soft-spoken, target-oriented, science communication, polarized person. I like him, and let this talk be given on his memory. It's OK. Fine, let us start actually. To start with, I am not an, I can say I am not an astronomer, first of all, I am a science communicator. My experience actually with the telescopes is wonderful. Um, I have uh, installed a good number of uh, mini observatories, especially in University of Kerala, 
um, Tamil Nadu Science and Science and Technology Museum, and um, uh, even one for our um, Lakshadweep. Like that, it goes actually. So perhaps from in, in the famous firm called Celestron, I may be the biggest customer for them in India, procuring around five 14-inch automated computerized auto tracking telescopes. And something around 20 11 inch telescopes, all high end, high technology ones actually. And installing them and to some extent doing some astrophotography, all those things actually took me here. Basically, I am an electronics person with a postgraduate degree in electronics. And the, it's electronic equipment. Telescope is not a, uh, so now it has become totally in electronics and computer based equipment. Okay, let me come to that. Thing, when the story starts actually. Who invented the telescope? Even sometime back, I've seen in the government accredited agency books and all, it is Galileo Galilei. Is it true? It's not true. Actually, it is mentioned uh, that as John Lippershey. John Lippershey is not accredited, but people say John Lippershey presented for intellectual property rights in 1608, and it was not granted because many people along with him applied. So they were in a dilemma. They, were, they couldn't grant the IP, intellectual property right to John Lippershey. But recordically, he is the first person to present the details of a telescope uh, to the uh, concerned forum for accreditation. Actually, he is a spectacle maker. Kannada chain or Kashyan. Abum puli kaarande factory alladi was so called workshop. He has seen the children playing with the lenses, two convex lenses, and the two convex lenses they can get a magnified. They can peep through the lens and find a magnified, magnified image of a distant object. And they were wondering, the wonder was transferred to him. Then he made some instrument to peep long distance things and all. It was something like a spy glass or spyware to look at the people on the army which is coming towards, towards any country, by kings and other officials and all. And then Galileo Galilei is a person to shift the telescope towards the skies. And so, and he predicted a lot. He has given, given a lot to the society and the astronomical society and all. So that is a story. The story goes like that. So there is officially no inventor for telescope, but people say John Lippershe. It's not Galileo Galilei. Let us come. What is well introducing? Sri Albert, Shanji Albert has very clearly told it is two pieces of glass. Yes, any telescope starting from Hubble's telescope around um, 480 kilometers in the sky, above, above the high, above, above in the sky, to the normal small telescope people are using, they have got only two pieces of glass. Two pieces of glass. What are, what are the things actually? One, the larger lens called the objective lens. Objective lens is a diameter. So larger lens called the objective lens. The other one actually we peep through, we look through. It is a smaller lens we call it the eyepiece actually. With the two pieces, anyone with some in this thing, anyone can make a telescope. I can show you one now right now here itself actually. See, this is a telescope. It has got a objective lens here and a tube and an eyepiece. Only this much. Something within 300, 400, 350 rupees are just spending 150 rupees for the lens, two lenses and something around for whatever the acre is available after plumbing work in a new house or you can go to a shop and get the things you can make a telescope for just 350 rupees. Wonderful. You can look at the two wheelers are coming the end of a road or you can see a distant building. It's wonderful actually. And people can understand what is actually, what's, how simple is a telescope. And you can start your journey toward in the, in the field of astronomy from you know, this small telescope, actually. This telescope we often make in the names and our Kerala State Science and Technology Museum to the new, new guys and all for getting an introduction to the thing. Okay, let us go proceed upon. There are two types of telescopes. There are also Shaji Albert has already told. One is a refractive. 
the primitive, the old telescope. Then it became reflective after Newton's and all. The reflective telescope came into existence. Let us see what is the technique or what is the physics behind these two telescopes. Let us go slowly and find. Normally, we use a lens. And available for 30 or 40 rupees in the local market. People will get the lens and they will make burns in the hand by keeping the lens towards the sun and showing your another hand beneath that. If you bring the lens in such a way, the focal point is at the, at the hand, your hand will get a burn. Or if you put a small a piece of cotton, you can make the cotton to, to fire. So that things you can do, but here actually what you can do if you use the same lens and you can use for reading as a magnifying glass or the watchmaker you can see the small lens, a single lens and a small tube, he'll fix it to his eyes and you can see the parts of a watch and a number of things actually do. The smaller, smaller things and all, we have to find out of our reading, everything, we can use it. How it works? They're very simple, the ray diagram. If the object is kept in between the lens, optic center of the lens, or the center of the lens, whatever it may be, and the focus, say it is 20 centimeters or 10 centimeters, or the object is kept within a small coin. You can keep the coin, just if the lens focal lens is 20 centimeters, within 20 centimeters, you can get a virtual magnified image that is shown in the ray diagram. If you keep your eyes here on one side of the lens and you keep the object and you can peep through the lens, you can see a virtual image. A virtual image can be seen. Only we can't cast the image in a screen. You can see it actually. Your eyes can peep through the lens and see a magnified image. And that is the principle behind the basic principle behind the any telescope. Any telescope in the world, you can say. So, so first part is this actually. Now comes, if you add one more lens, uh, when one more lens, it comes like this, this is the IP's part. Now, let us go for the objective part. You can see the objective. The objective part, the stars or trees or whatever it may be, they are at infinity. You know, at infinity at F, made up by heart, it crammed it actually, at infinity at F, at F, at infinity, at to F, at to F. Like that you may have crammed the ray diagram or the optics about a convex lens. And here, the uh, things, the astronomical objects are the trees, are the buildings are quite far away and we can say infinity and you can see here PQ is a rays coming from the object and it will cast an image and in the focus, F0 is the object focal in the, the objective and F0 it will create a real inverted very very small dimmest image you can see it actually pq after cross through ground crossing through after passing through after refracting through in the objective lens o it is getting confined at f not f0 object focal and objective focal into the objective lens and a small image is casted that is called p you can see it there and pq1 you can or you can say q1 so that image is a real image. That image is brought within the focal length of the eyepiece as you already mentioned. Within the focal length, if we keep the object, what will happen? We'll get a virtual enlarged image. Thing happened here also. The image received from the objective lens is brought in between the focal point and the center of the optic center of the eyepiece. Enough. You can get a very good virtual enlarged inverted inverted image of the object so that is the refractive telescope very simple actually two pieces of glass fixed at the particular distances depending on their focal length we can make a telescope all refractive telescopes of this order only but there are some shortcomings colorful edge chromatic aberration they call it actually so, and not only that, the magnification needs to be so big. So, Kepler improved the design. Kepler improved the design by keeping a less curved objective lens. So, what will happen? The focal length will increase and the magnification is actually the focal length of the objective divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. So, when it is given a long focal length, you can get a highly magnified thing. 
so with that thing kepler modified it and but there are some shortcomings for this uh, telescope refracting telescope you can see the telescopes in it they are their full form you can see the refracting telescopes are like this this is one i showed same thing you can see the other one i can show you commercially available things are there the second one i have seen on the left side it is the telescope available in kssstm very small telescope metallic telescope i hope it was procured during halley's time in 1986 or so and this one is a new telescope these are all refractive telescopes we can use it they are coming with a stand and the first one is shown without the stand it's my what i am keeping here and all and let us go for that and now comes a reflective telescope the refractive telescope the light rays are refracting they are traversing they are passing through the lenses two times twice not once they are passing through two lenses so but the lenses are not uniform they are very the convex lenses are having more thickness in the center and less thickness in the edges actually so what will happen the diffraction is applied uh, is applied and they are subject to chromatic operation something like a prism it will act the prism if you give white light what will get you will get a different colored thing so colored rings cannot rings colored edges will be available and you, you can see that so to avoid that actually newton's time the same was modified so you can see here actually the from 45 degree flat mirror and before that side on the left hand side you can see the light rays are coming straight away from the object from infinity and they are coming to a concave mirror mirror means it won't traverse through it will be reflected so there is no uh, the diffraction or anything no refraction so no diffraction and the light rays are reflected back to another mirror kept 45 degrees you can ask a question will it not obstruct no it don't obstruct and all and it's taken towards a side tube and you are using a very small lens very small lens so considerably the diffraction is not reduced and through that you can have the eyepiece and you can see the once again the inverted image only you can see that so here the the, the the chromatic aberration is almost reduced and this design has become very popular and most of the telescopes used in and around the world by schools colleges universities and even the hubble is also using a refractive so sorry reflective telescope only okay let us see how it is you can see a reflected telescope this is a schematic diagram i have shown the ray diagram and now i am showing the schematic diagram a person is seem supposed to be standing on the wedge and the reflection you can see a concave mirror is there and a 45 degree tilted plane mirror is there and using ips you can see the newton in focus you can see and it comes actually in the brand the first one is a telescope available in kssstm and here actually the telescope has got lot of things not only the concave mirror and the filter lens um, glass and uh, 45 degree tilted glass everything is all covered inside it has got a viewfinder it has got a remote control like thing and uh, it has got gps inclination everything it is an 8 inch telescope actually the cost of this telescope is imported it's even available in us actually of course chinese people are making it and sending it to us and us people are uh, we are getting imported from us and the cost of this will come around something around 3.5 lakh now it's okay for a school and comes other one other one actually is a indian telescope it is available in some of the science centers and here the same thing actually what you are seeing the other side the rays are coming and the, a, you can see the view finder and there's a tube on the other side through the tube actually you can see the tube is not shown here in the optical tube the eyepiece is not shown here whatever you are seeing is a view finder only okay so these are the things reflected telescopes are available and in kssstm we have got 8 inch telescope it's imported we have got 11 inch telescope reflective imported that cost something around 6 to 7 lakh rupees and we have got 14 inch telescope somewhat bigger actually and we have to fix it and we have to do a lot of work actually it is so big and hefty and we installed it it is also imported one it's good and the similar telescopes are available in the iast 24 inch telescope is there and um, our kerala university they have got a 14 inch telescope 
Tamilnadu, Chennai uh, Science Center. They have got a 14 inch telescope. Like the demon in our Chalakudi Science Center also, we are installing, our people are installing. Now I am not in the, the institution, I am retired. Our people are installing. I procured it and kept it in the stock. They may be installing it shortly. And like that, they are wonderful telescopes. Fine. Let us go come back. And there are some parameters. The parameters are very important. Even if you purchase a bike, you may say 100 cc, 350 cc bullet, or 125 cc Yamaha, 100 cc Bajaj. Like that, we are telling the cc is the you can say volume of the cylinder, and well, the, through which the piston is moving up and down. So similarly, here also for the telescopes, there are two three parameters. Um, important parameters are these three. Out of which people normally think magnification is a very important parameter. No, no, there is a third important parameter. The first parameter is light gathering power. And the second one is resolving power. And the third one is magnification. So let us see what is light gathering power and resolving power and magnification. Let us go for, let us have an idea about our eye. You can see the eye. The eye has got a retina inside. The retina has got a lot of rods and cones. They are the sensors. And it is from scientifically learned that there are 130 million rods, or what do you say, the intensity sensors, the brightness sensors, and there are something around 7 million cones. They are color sensors. So it's a highly sophisticated, you can say, is a, um, optical thing is our eye. Highly sophisticated. 130 megapixel camera, you can say. 130 megapixel. We are talking about 2 megapixel, 8 megapixel, 16 megapixel. And high end, uh, our um, cameras are 32, 64 megapixels and all. But our eye, the retina has got 130 megapixels, you can see. And that is also controlled. The pupil, the iris is a shutter. The iris is a shutter. The shutter, if there is a brightness, they can see in the top. The shutter will be closed and you can see only a smaller um, eye and the smaller opening, smaller opening. And if it is not the case, it will open. If it is so dark, it will be wide open and you can say something around 8 millimeter. In the first um, image, it is almost closed and if you carefully look at the thing, it may be something around 1.5 millimeter and beneath it is 8 millimeters. This arrangement through this only the light rays pass and they will cast an image inside the our eye on the retina where the rods and cones are situated so what will happen it depends how much it is open how much light is gathering i can see if our telescope is looking towards a tower or a church building it the church building may be seen fully as a light blue an ellipse is seen, or it may be slightly smaller ellipse. There you can see the cross and the cone alone, the top of the um, tower's cone alone. So it depends. So the light gathering power, light means not the, the bright light or white light. It is the light from the image. The light from the image which is entering the eye and casting the image. That is the important thing. And they have mentioned the light gathering power is the area of the objective lens to the area of a pupil. The area of pupil diameter of the pupil is normally at the 8 mm, 8 mm. And the area of the um, objective depends on the diameter of the objective lens. The bigger more light part, light, light things can be image. The, the more light information about the image can be brought inside. If it is smaller, lesser information can be brought inside. So light gathering power is a very important thing. It is it is directly proportional to the diameter or the size of the objective lens. That is a very important thing. And the second comes the resolving power, the ability to see small details. It depends on the ability to see small details. So how far we are bringing the image in, into our eye. It depends, it's, a, it's measured in terms of the angle. The angle, it may be in arc seconds or so. Maybe 0.1 arc second or um, 1 arc second. It goes on the order of arc seconds. You can, even, even if it is less than 0.1 arc second, it is well and good actually. So 
the light gathering power will bring minute details light details of the object and the how much angle and this is a resolving power and then comes the magnification the magnification is nothing but the ratio of the object focal length of the object lens to the focal length of the ips so it may be in terms of maybe say 10 times initially it was only 3 times now sometimes 100 sometimes 400 and all the telescopes they procure are of the range of something around 400 times magnification the magnification are the big thing but the resolving power and the light gathering power are the big things so altogether all the three are to be considered while purchasing a good telescope actually let us go deep into the things and a single of concave mirror it is very difficult if you make a single concave mirror the mirror may get broken by itself weight or even while handling the possibility of getting a fracture on the mirror concave mirror is very high so people go for multi mirror telescope so they make a structure and they grind symmetrically and they fix small small pieces in such a way and give gaps the gaps are filled with the particular material so it look like as if it is a single mirror that is a technique and most of the most of the hubble is a single mirror and other things most of bigger things are available keck observatory or our observatory at mount saraswati and new telescopes they are all only multiple Uh, hexagonal mirror pieces combine together to form a multi mirror base actually okay let us go further and some aperture of some of the things in the case of same what we are having is a 2.4 meters 24 inch not 24 inch i am talking about 11 inch and in the kavalur it is telescope at kavalur sorry hubble sorry hubble telescope it is 2.4 meters at kavalur it is near by vellur in tamil nadu we have got a very good observatory vainu babu observatory and the the diameter of the or the aperture of the objective lens objective mirror is 2.3 meters there how about it is 2.4 meters and the largest optical telescope available it is a compound mirror not a single mirror it is something around 10.4 meters and hanley observatory it is 2 meters and the case system it is 24 inch sorry 14 inch it is only 4.4 meters so these are the comparisons but the thing is nowadays technology has come gone to that much extent we can take multiple shots and integrate and do image processing so a small telescope with 14 inch can do wonderfully well as like a 2.3 or 2.4 meter of aperture telescope that is a wonderful thing we will come Now we talking further. I will mention about that also. Fine. Let us come. What are the largest optical telescopes in the world? Optical. I am not talking about X-ray. I am not talking about ultraviolet. I am. I am not talking about infrared. I am talking about the optical visible telescopes and all. It is actually large binocular telescope at Mount Graham. The I mean Arizona, US actually. You can see two telescopes. together both on each each one of them is something around 8.4 meters wide mirrors and together they can have an effective aperture of something around 11.8 meters they are 14.4 meters apart and together they can have they can give an effective aperture of 11.8 meters that is the biggest optical telescope available in the world it is in arizona desert of us then comes actually the grand telescope of canarias in canary islands spain spain canada us together they have made the they have arranged the telescope and this is single aperture there two apertures are there so two mirrors are there in the other one now it is 10.4 meters that is what i mentioned the largest telescope single aperture you can say single structure even this telescope the objective lens is made up of hexagonal pieces but there is only one objective mirror concave mirror but concave mirror has got small 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 hexagonal components but this also there in spain in canary islands it is one of the is the biggest one now comes another one keck observatory uh, sorry hobby telescope this is another one actually this also 10 meter 
it is in texas this also belongs to you this is a property of united states isa and other countries have joined actually it is in texas and this this is also 10 meter 30 foot upper telescope and mcdonald observatory it is called so these are all large observatory then one is keck the keck is come somewhat quite old there are two observatories two twin observatories and in hawaii and these observatory the funny thing is actually the they are both 10 meters each actually so together they may be something around 15 meters and they are doing wonderfully well one was installed in 1993 the other one was installed in 1996 doing a wonderful work in hawaii hawaii is somewhat a tourist place also very costly place in the world uh, per day if you um, hire a hotel it may be something in our amount it may be 50000 rupees or so uh, economy model so it's a wonderful place a good place actually so in the hawaii islands so it is there so these are our biggest bigger bigger biggest telescopes optical area when they using visible spectrum and all okay let us go back to other things and the, now coming to the point we have talked about the telescopes and all and the mount of the telescope and is even costlier than a telescope itself the mount because in this telescope i can't keep it watching comfortably with this thing in my hand will shiver and it will shake and i won't get a beautiful image so we want a rugged a rigid mount the mount is normally a tripod and the mounts are coming in different types one famous mount is alt azimuth mount another one is german equatorial mount the both mounts are available even in ksstm if you um, when the pandemic is over if you go to the science center you can see both uh, mounts actually let me explain what are these two mounts actually one is first one is equatorial mount the equatorial mount the equatorial mount the 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 axis you can see the axis is pointing towards the pole star or the north pole the towards the pole star or you can say towards the north pole and so what will happen it is towards the north pole the optical tube can be rotated the optical tube can be comfortably rotated so a single motor can do comfortably good what is called tracking there is no by us in the ultra simath mount it is a different story you have to go for two motors one motor in the alt, alt, altitude to control the altitude another one to control the azimuth horizontally and one vertically so here you can see one motor will be doing the work vertically another one is horizontally horizontally we call it azimuth and vertically we call it altitude so two motors are functioning means there is a chance for some vibration in the other case there is only one motor so what will happen so only since there is only one motor another other thing we can manually tighten it towards the, the means you can see the counterweight some two cylindrical things then that portion will be extending towards the north pole and the optical tube that can rotate in any of the direction so here the vibration chances of vibration are very low and only one motor is enough so it is economic the controlling is easy vibrations are less and good for astrophotography but only thing we have to do some work some complicated work for make, making it to track a particular star or planet that's the thing but once you get the practice it is easy you can do it comfortably well so these two types of mounts are very famous and is similar by branch of on the dobsonian mount like the mounts are there dobsonian mount is also one one part of altasimuth mount only so but these two mounts what are telescope in available mostly they are coming under these two categories only so if you are going for purchasing a telescope first of all you have to find out how much you can spend then you can find whether you are going for reflective or refractive then you can go for the mount altasimuth or equatorial call they call it german equatorial mount because it is very popular in germany so they call it german equatorial mount so what type of mount then you can see whether it is computerized whether it is auto tracking and and then this gps inclusion is also there is coming up and what is the aperture what is the light gathering power what is the resolving power all those things and what is the magnification so all these things you have to take it into consideration and a lot of other filters all those things are coming for procuring a good telescope for a university college or a school also so that's the thing now comes the global positioning system that is a wonderful thing actually you know all you all know about the global positioning system also india has got its own indian regional navigation satellite system irnss 
and my GPS belongs to US. The telescopes are all coming from US, you know, they are also using, they are linked to GPS only. And what is the fun out of it actually? For example, I am a new person, I have no idea in astronomy. I don't know, this uh, it's the Alpha Orionis or Betelgeuse, the star. The star Betelgeuse is also called Alpha Orionis. And if I know this Alpha Orionis, I can focus the telescope, or focus the optical, optical tube of the telescope towards Alpha Orionis and put it in tracking mode and find it. But if I myself is not aware, what is the star? Because no labeling is there. Just when you're going on roads, you can say Patam towards Patam or uh, towards the Kollam like that. You can see name boards and all, but the sky, no, no name boards are there. So we are in a um, typical situation to find out the stars and all. So you have to learn astronomy, but identify the stars, then only you can come for them. But if you're using global positioning system, it is not like that. You might have seen the other telescope. There is a, um, there is, you can see here, another telescope where you can see the, our K system telescope. Now, you can see a remote in the left telescope. You can see something like a remote. It can be lifted up. In the remote, if you press a particular number, if it is Jupiter, if the Jupiter is available, the telescope itself will take the, the optical, the optical tube itself will take towards Jupiter. Got it? So, or if you press Alpha Orionis, or if you say Betelgeuse, if it is a bright star, the name itself is available in the display, or if it's not a bright star, the code word number will be available. If you press it, it will take it towards the thing. If the thing is not available in the visibility, or has gone down, or has beneath the horizon, it will inform us accordingly. So, such a wonderful thing is the GPS ringed. There is a small microcomputer, or you can say a microcontroller. So, microcontroller. And controlling is there, and GPS link is there, and commuters are there. So battery is also there. We have to connect a battery. Meaning the battery will be keeping beneath. So with all those things, anybody, any novice, any new person can comfortably do sky observation and enjoy the night sky or against against the starry night sky. Now comes actually. So this is the thing of GPS. Let us come back. See, I can tell you another story actually. Only in 2007 only, something around 13 years back, I, after becoming the director, I procured a telescope, new telescope, 11 inch telescope, GPS into telescope. So I was so uh, excited, wondered. And so on the first day, what I did, I told all my staff members, tonight we can celebrate it. We can see all the stars and all. As casual. And the people all came with families and all. We arranged it. We lunch, I'm sorry. Dinner was arranged for everyone. And we were waiting for uh, to uh, for um, for dusk. Around 6, 7, 7 o'clock we gathered. But it started raining. Raining. It was so cloudy. The rain has gone. It was so cloudy. We can't see a single star. We couldn't use the telescope. And everyone took dinner and went away. Went home happily. I was there. In the director's room, there are some sofas. I was sleeping in the sofa. Around two o'clock, I came out. And then midnight or the early morning, I saw stars and all. I called my security people. Come, come. Let us leave the telescope. Telescope was there in my room only. All three people together, myself also, joined hands. Lifted the telescope, brought out. While actually, when I just brought it out, just drizzling. Started drizzling. Nothing. Once again, cloudy. I took it back. I couldn't do any observation for something around 10 days. After 10 days, my native place is Nagargoy. I was here in Nagargoy. And then around 11, 11.30, I was brushing. I found the sky is so clear. Stars are twinkling. I told my wife, no, no, I am going to my office. At 11 o'clock, I took my car. Within one hour, one hour, 10 minutes, I reached Trivandrum. I reached Papanangudu. It was raining. And I couldn't do anything. I came to my room and slept there. Next day morning, I attended the office. So this is a thing. So Trivandrum like places are very worst at the maximum. You may get 75 days in a year for sky observation. So normally what we do, we take the telescopes in the van and go to somewhere near the Thirnal Valley where there is not much rain, where we can get something on 200 days in a year. And there is an engineering college guest house. The manager is happy to give us a guest house and all. And we stay there. We go with the food, stay there, and throughout the night, we do sky observation. Like that, it has gone. Only after procuring a new telescope, after two months only, I could use that 11 inch uh, computerized automated celestron telescope for sky observation. So, that is a pitiable thing. And uh, many times, actually, if you, but if you look at the thing, if you are going in the flight, can you see the rain? 
can you get the rain the flight is high enough you won't get in rain because clouds are beneath that only the, this can go for something around 30000 feet 35000 40000 feet then the aeroplanes can go but what is the thing the clouds are around 10000 feet only 10000 15000 feet only so we can see clouds beneath the our uh, flight not above the flight actually when it is full full swing full speed in the in the, in the right altitude so these actually people thought in 1960s itself actually and uh, what is wrong if we send a telescope along with the satellite that happened and uh, russia is the first country to send a telescope but it is that was not that much what you call um, sophisticated or uh, um, the, 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 the usefulness of the interfaces or the links, the camera are not that much high end. And the first high end telescope sent to you know, space is the Hubble Space Telescope, something around 4,000, sorry, 480 um, kilometers, less than 500 kilometers. The Hubble Space Telescope is there. It is positioned there. It is making a, you can say, a pole to pole orbit. The telescope makes something, something as like actually our International Space Station. It is scanning, it is coming around. Similar to ISS, it is also scanning. So, the people thought, US people thought in 1980 itself for sending a wonderful telescope to space. 24 hours they can do observation. And they planned for that, and ESA also joined. Everyone pumped money, and the, the, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the telescope is something on eight meters diameter. Um, this one, what is the thing? Objective mirror, actually. Con okay, mirror. It was ground. It was ground beautifully well at the Jet Propulsion Laboratories and all, and they were making it. Um, but what has happened in 1986, the Challenger disaster happened and around six people um, were, they were burned to death while taking off and it was become a big issue in the US Congress or US Parliament and people told, the US people, people in power then told no more uh, space travel and all, cut short everything actually because there's a very pathetic one school teacher who wanted to go to space, she was also, she also perished along, along with uh, another five people actually. A tragedy, tragedy, so what has happened, they stopped. But after the time is a cure for many, many wounds to be healed. So after some years, by 98, 1988, 89 and all, they thought, okay, we are done invested that much of money. This time we are not sending any person, only we are sending a telescope. So we can launch a telescope. So with that idea in 1990, that telescope started construction. It is a big thing, something on 40 meters and all. And you can see the, the size of the telescope. And 1990, 24th, the April shuttle, my discovery, launch a discovery mission, shuttle mission, they call it the code STS on discovery launch the telescope. It is a space telescope, it is an optical telescope, and the shuttle the rocket took the telescope and kept it in or orbit, and the along with the good number of solar, two solar panels and all, it was looking wonderfully well, and a lot of small and big cameras, and eight meter, 240, um, sorry, um, eight meter, dia, 240 centimeters, eight meter dia, uh, things and all, it was sent um, and is in the orbit. Not 8 meter, sorry, 3 meter, 240, 2.4 2 meters, 240 centimeters, 2.4 meters actually. Okay, so that was sent, it was there in the orbit, and everyone clapped hands. In on 24th April, it was launched on that day itself, it was in orbit. They clapped hands, they hugged each other, but the laughter or the happiness was not lasting long because when the images came down, the images are not that much clear. They are not that much clear. Then they observed what is wrong with the thing. They found the mirror, they ground, it's a monolithic mirror, single mirror, concave mirror, and 2.4 meters dia, you can see eight feet, eight feet, 2.4 meters dia approximately. That mirror has got some grinding mistake. So what has happened? You can see the mirror was not ground properly. You can see the different components available. There's a shutter, the incoming light will come, the secondary mirror, primary mirror, and the focal point, all these things are there. It is something 
லைக் யூ கேன் சே இந்த ஓல்ட் டெலிஃபோன் பூத் என்றால் காயின் ஆப்ரேட் டெலிஃபோன் பூத் லைக் தட் இட் இஸ் அண்ட் இட் இஸ் கண்ட்ரோல்டு இந்த டேட்டா இஸ் ரிசீவ் பை ட்ராக்கிங் அண்ட் டிலே ட்ராக்கிங் அண்ட் டேட்டா ரிலே சேட்டலைட்ஸ் அண்ட் கமிங் டு த கிரவுண்ட் ஸ்டேஷன் அண்ட் கோடாட் ஸ்பேஸ் ஸ்டேஷன் தே டூ த இமேஜ் ப்ராசிங் அண்ட் தே கெட் த அவுட் புட் அன்ஃபார்ச்சுனேட்லி த அவுட் புட் வாஸ் நாட் குட் and they saw a tiny flaw very small flaw 150th of the thickness of a sheet of a paper you can see the thickness of a sheet of paper it is something less than 1 mm actually so that not more than 1 mm it is less than 0.1 mm so we went 0.1 mm 150th thickness so where error is there while grinding it so it was distorted the image was distorted so people were finding fault with each other the media and the press they told what the scientists are doing here are some responsible people and they have given the thing for spherical aberration it is so blurry the images were so what has happened they were in a very missing but scientists have got they will try to find out solution innovative solution actually while launching they thought after some years someone can go to say some scientists can go to space and do some modifications and all but they thought of that so they made how we can rectify it we can't take the mirror here and go with a big 8 feet or 2.4 meter diameter mirror and go and fix it it is very difficult task so they thought they can add some electronic circuitry in the observational point itself so that the error can be eliminated there itself and they can bring clear image so in the first service mission started and the 10 days it lasted in a in a rocket a rocket was launched with three people there on the board and december 19 after three years after three years 1993 10 days it was lasting they went with high speed photometer they went with the wild field planetary camera solar arrays and drive electronics everything they replaced and they kept the necessary electronic equipment also along with that to make the correction and all so it was successful and 10 days they returned and they were there only sorry they did not return they, they kept the thing in the orbit they kept it there they captured the, the, the hubble space telescope and the rocket which is then they were moving together it was captured attached to the rocket and they entered they made all the corrections they came they were in the sleeping mode it was once again sent back to orbit and photographs were taken the photographs are beautifully well exemplary they were very happy you can see the image taken before the service mission and after the service mission the spiral galaxy and we can't take a photograph now we can take at that time and some can say some 27 years back like this and it was wonderful so people enjoyed it once again the media actually who were finding fault to the scientists congratulated the scientists for their good effort and it was going on that was not the end actually because they thought that the telescope is working fantastically well and anything they can change except the mirror so second service mission went in 1997 1990 they launched 1993 the first service mission went and 1993 second service mission and once again 1999 the third service mission the third service mission not not that much successful so they sent one more mission there is 3a in 1999 and 3b also in 2002 so that period it was not fully functional and in 2002 they made fully function the sophisticated more sophisticated equipment and is going well initially it was planned only for 5 years but it's going on and the story went on and in 2009 the fourth mission the fourth mission went and they changed almost everything except the mirror and the frame and now also even today in 2020 december also the hubble telescope is going performing comfortably well it is better than any other optical telescope in the world and lot of wonderful discoveries have happened actually so what has happened after hubble even in 2008 9 itself usa nasa they planned for a james webb telescope so but the upon the launch of james webb telescope was postponed they added 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 more and more sophisticated initially it was planned as a um, optical then they added ultraviolet then they added x ray then they all all bandwidths actually they added radio frequency bandwidth every all the fre- um, frequency observations are made possible and they are preparing it now they are telling on on uh, october 2021 they will be launching it means after 10 months they launch it actually so it is going on so we can have it important discoveries of hubble 
the hubble space constant from the big bang onwards the entire universe is expanding the rate of expansion was calculated by hubble but the calculation was wrong proved by hubble telescope we give the name edward hubble's name hubble to the telescope but whatever edgar edward hubble discovered is found to be wrong the wrong the correct was corrected by hubble actually and a lot of theories and the prevalence of black holes in the center of the galaxy it is also confirmed people proposed there is no proof it is now confirmed with the thing and a lot of other things also happened shoemaker levy in 1994 1993 our scientists made the hubble telescope functional fully functional and what has happened a comet is coming from the extreme um, remote um, um, this thing space and it is coming towards and on the way it is encountering with the jupiter that the time was the our people predicted scientists predicted the comet is going to have a direct encounter it is going to hit the jupiter but unfortunately we are not in a position to take a photograph because it's hitting the other side the far side because we are here jupiter is the side it is hitting the other side of the thing but comfortably our telescope is positioned in such a way and it can take the photographs in such a way not beyond jupiter it has taken a position the extreme end of the orbit and took photographs of the impact of comet of shoemaker levy in the jupiter in 1994 and the images are wonderful actually and we can find the dust cloud emanating due to the impact and all so that is one wonderful thing and all and we have in got better um, we have been got better photos than voyager voyager has taken beautiful photographs because it was going very close and after that the come the our our hubble system photographs are beautiful wonderful with more clarity and all and now the james webb telescope it is of size of a football ground you can see here the entire team has assembled in front of the real size model and the photograph they have released actually so you can see it has got the radio eyes it has got the infrared eyes it has got optical eyes it has got ultraviolet eyes and it can do a lot of wonders that is a thing and now before ending the thing the talk i would like to say if you people are interested in astronomy or observational astronomy you want to use telescope for sky observation i have wanted to tell you some two three things first of all it is a very patient hobby or profession if you want to make it a profession it should be it is a very patient profession you have to be a meticulously patient to do sky observation another thing we have to get but start not all of us can jump you can not you can purchase a 14 inch or 11 inch or a higher telescope and image you can switch on like a television or lcd tv and go go begin that actually you have learned a little bit of astronomy so my advice to you actually you can become a star gazer now if you look at the sky in the quiet early morning in the after the and then the, the, you can see in the western sky the western sky in the middle portion you can see the orion you can start your this thing with the observing the orion constellation and you can observe the great orion nebula you can observe the pleiades and you can start observing the stars identifying stars there is no need for a telescope and all you can use a star chart and your naked eye and patience come out in the night after 3 o'clock or so and start doing observation you can identify the stars you take the star chart you will use the star chart and try to identify the different stars their movements and low slowly slowly locate how it is moving now it is visible today means next month now it is december january it will come 2 hours before and next year 24 hours before the same time it will come so start doing that star gazing or with the naked eye without not even spending a single pace you take the even now that the the, the, the the mobile phones are coming with beautiful apps the apps you can see you can identify the stars what is a star or what is a planet and there is a beautiful uh, software called stellarium the stellarium star you can use it for dating how where are the things at what time the star will be there how it will move what is the motion what is the retrograde motion a lot of things you can learn then you go for a small telescope 
say we can go to some institution like a science center or a planetarium in the near proximity or some school and tell them to conduct some program you can go and see that thing if you are interested i'm sure only 10% of the people may be having the perseverance the patience and the interest to do the sky observation or involve in astronomy you can go for a small telescope and later after seeing and seeing you can increase and you can want to slowly you will get the guidance of your own so don't um, directly plunge into the thing you have to do at least homework for 6 months or 6 or 8 9 10 months depending on your availability and i am once again telling trivandrum is not a good place you can go for some dry places actually and then you should have the temperament for that also or you can and the in trivandrum the problem is actually the light pollution dust pollution these two are the biggest enemies the sodium vapor lamps the mercury vapor lamps the neon lamps actually they are the biggest enemies for sky observation we some time back our sky system was in a good place in the city within the city for good observation now it is not like that we can have a good number of neon hoardings highly bright neon lamp hoardings a lot of other lamps and if you look at the sky till a lot of dust pollution is also there till 10 o'clock in the night I mean, dust still cover it, and after ten o'clock, there is light pollution. So you come you, apart from that, you have to do the work and all. So like that, you can do. You can enjoy the landscape. Another thing also, I want to tell you: if you take a eight inch or ten inch, eleven um, inch, eleven may cost something around say eleven, eight, seven, eight lakhs. And the eight inch may cost something around three lakh. The fourteen inch may cost something around fifteen lakh. Even in the fourteen inch telescope. if you look at the if you peep through and look at the um, jupiter you can see something like a the the the, the, the dot put the forehead of a girl only that much don't think you can see something like a masal dosa or a big circuit with that imagination don't plunge up you can see something like a small dot on the forehead of a girl so that spot you can call only that much you can see and but you can use you can take a use you can go for astrophotography you can use camera cctv cameras with the proper cooling facility and take multiple shots within a minute you can take 200 shot integrate the thing use a digital image processing softness and all and you can develop it something like what 8 meter telescope can do um or a 10 meter telescope can do that is possible but then that telescopes can do even wonderful things so with these things you can plunge up it is a beautiful hobby once you enter the hobby you will will be having the interest to learn any part of science and all so with these things let me say thank you and queries are welcome now yes Shahji Albert sir, please unmute everyone. They can ask the queries. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I think it is audible. Fine, it's audible. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. It was a really wonderful presentation. Now we all know much about telescopes. I think uh, we can uh, move on to next session. That thank is Q and A session. Mm. Uh, nobody have asked any questions yet. Is it? Uh, you can unmute them. They are morally asked. They need not type it. Yeah, they, yeah. You can raise your hands and ask questions directly. Only that is when people are there. So if you put in the gallery mode, everyone will be in the chat window. Yes. Sir. Yeah. There is one question. Yes. Uh, is space debris a problem during sky observation? Um, for our sky observation, space debris are not a problem because the telescopes are here. and we won't even see the thing at all we will be observing the planets the stars and all and even for uh, other telescopes and all uh, it is not a problem and of course some telescopes can even track space debris actually they can track the high end telescopes the like cap cap observatory or telescopes in arizona or in spain canary islands they can, they can be used for even tracking some of the space debris actually but it is not a problem for us they are problem for uh, satellites or even for hubble and others that may be a problem actually not for other things and all but they the thing is actually the agency it means isro is sending means isro has got a unit or nasa is sending nasa has got n number of units their duty is to track the the the, the what is and the, the the different space debris identify them 
number them and what is the position if they are coming in such a way it may damage they will alter the position actually that is going on i have got friends in that you know isro i know one dr savior james he is leading the team and they used to in the morning their duty is to find the position of the our satellites and all and what are the, the minimum threshold debris where they are coming and according they will be shifted actually so for a ground level observation nothing no issues for hubble space telescope or observing there our and then the agency which has launched it is taking care of it they will take care of it and mostly not a big issue but issues may come up actually there's a possibility but so far nothing has happened yes sir thank you sir mm -hmm. another question is from uh, yes. nilina shaji if trivandrum is a, is not a suitable place for sky observations please yes. suggest another somewhere remote and i can actually the sea shows and the nedumangadi area where are some forest like things are there not much lights are there the lights are our enemies actually and i can tell you two examples actually there's two stories once i went to lakshadweep and lakshadweep actually on the in the guest house i was alone so i came out i came out the stick actually and actually i was at that time i was not aware there are no snakes in lakshadweep and so information i got no snakes at all no crows at all but i was afraid at the time snakes may be available here and there avanga oru cheriya pedi undayum oru kambu und varade i was scratching the ground i went to the shore i just lifted my head in my life i have been see the splendor sky it was really beautiful you can see the milky way you can see the stars in their original colors with naked eye that is one experience actually similarly once i was traveling from nasik to mumbai and uh, it was early morning something on 4 o'clock nasik is on the eastern side of western ghats and mumbai is on the western side of western ghats when we have to cross through there's a pass you have to cross through before crossing the pass i could see a uh, splendors actually i told the taxi wala to stop and uh, i was enjoying for half an hour then told the flight you will lose the flight um, so you, you are not going to get the flight and all so so i continued the journey so some place are like that in trivandrum actually the sea shows where there are no lights and in the remote places lights are nedumangadi like there because our people they have not gone to nedumangadi and there are um, amateur um, astronomers and all who use nedumangadi and all to go there and tirunelveli area nanganeri that place are all okay we have gone there actually yes sir uh, thank you sir uh, there were only two questions you can ask your questions directly those those actually arjun uh, suraj rice with scan uh, Oh. Arjun, can you unmute the mic and ask your question? Oh. Hello. Ah uh, yes, Suraj, tell me. Um yes, sir. You to, uh, you told that in huge compound telescopes, hmm. a special material is used between the hexagonal mirrors. Ah yes, so yes, yes. Act yes, as a huge. mera ah yes actually so what is the material which is used and i am i am not aware of the material the material is serving one particular purpose because it will be directly seeing the sun you know so the thermal coefficient it should not expand further it won't go for the expansion will be compensated and will be size flexible and all i am not aware of the material they told us a special material which is told like that when once when i was attending a seminar in toulouse in france so i have forgotten what is the material used in that it's a special material let's say it's not special okay carry on so hmm. i have one more question very well um in i have heard that in huge compound telescopes hmm. there are uh, some like smooth motors which align the all the hexagons yes. yes 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 But yes after yes. a few years maybe the alignment will change Mm. so that they can correct it back they can the, the motors are there for correction purpose and, uh, and there is a special structures flexible structures uh, with the, I mean, which can slowly very little amount they can get give displacement for correction purpose and uh, that things are totally controlled by computer special software so we need not take any measurements or anything there are sensors they take the measurements of the uh, in their thing mathematically they can find what is the error and that error can be corrected by engaging the motors and so uh, this that's happening thank, thank you sir. sir okay welcome thank you sir another question okay. is from nilina 
why uh, why hexagonal shape is used for complex telescopes ah uh, actually hexagonal shape it is a it will fit properly number one and uh, the material can be even we can make the curves can be made better thing is actually if you are using a square or if you are using a rectangle that fitness may not be there it may hit somewhere here is something like a circuit so it is uniform and even the small very little error that all will be equally distributed that is the reason they are using the uh, hexagonal shape uh, something like a honeycomb structure if you cut it will also give a honeycomb thing there is the same reason also is for that okay thank you sir another question is from devi smita sir yes. how to make a simple homemade telescope very simple actually you can uh, even break through can arrange often we are arranging actually but it's of not much use you can understand the principle thing is procure 150 okay, this is something around 2.5 inch objective you can note down and the focal length is something around 40 cm or 50 cm and the maximum 60 then it will be so lengthy it is very difficult to handle and you can get another another my piece of something around 10 cm or 15 cm and the maximum 20 cm and you get a, a what is our coupler another tube of the same order and uh, reducer and another thing like this it is available in youtube and uh, many many people are doing it actually science and technology museum also we were often every year during summer vacation both for the junior and the senior batches we give it and i i know breakthrough as well as parishad and uh, kerala um, our um, 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 astro kerala they are all often conducting it also in trivandrum so you can be in touch with breakthrough they can be in touch with astro kerala or they can be in touch with the um, ksstm people and they often conduct workshops telescope making workshops and all and they join the summer class this in the unfortunately due to pandemic summer classes are not conducted and during summer class it's invariably in all batches will be providing we will give materials and make them to take it to a telescope it's available in youtube locally to any laboratory supplier you can go and get the lenses and you can go to any hardware shop which is selling the pvc tubes and you can cut you can understand the principle accordingly and you can get the details for making and you can do it comfortably well and if you are doing as a single piece it may come around 400 rupees or so if you are doing multiple pieces it will be around 300 rupees only thank you sir it was already explained i think In the session itself. The session I explained it. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yes, welcome. Uh, this is Arjun. Yes, Arjun. Um, so you told that in uh, the James Webb telescope, it uh, can yes. capture uh, pictures in different bandwidths and different yes. wavelengths. No, not not bad. Okay, it can capture objects using different. wavelength uh, my wavelength they can they can use radio frequency and the radio frequency waves coming from that particular star can be captured and accordingly they can be identified they can use ultraviolet rays so whatever ultraviolet rays coming from that uh, star or planet or whatever it may be and they can be taken radio frequencies they can be observed if you use a dish antenna the radio frequencies emitted by the different uh, planets or the different uh, stars they can be captured and uh, the observation can be conducted that is the thing so different bandwidths can be used for getting the input it may be in the form of ultraviolet ray it may be form of microwave or radio wave or visible ray or infrared ray that is the thing got it yes sir um one more question welcome um in this picture you can see that uh, below the james webb telescope there mm. is a sheet Ah. of different layers yes i have heard that it is for blocking the sunlight mm. so the origami is used so that these uh, layers mm. unfold in space mm. is it true yes it's it's true it's true when well, origami actually for telling the example they told the origami but they are using specially motors sensors and all and the mathematics simple mathematics not simple math complicated mathematics is used for controlling them 
origami is a word they might have told just like in origami you can make actually in the papers can be folded and all that they might have for an example they might have told you actually they are using servo motors they are using different types of motors they are using sensors and they are using different types of microprocessors microcontrollers and computers for controlling everything whether to fold or unfold okay Thank you, sir. Okay, Arjun. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A any okay. more questions? Uh, for some reason, uh, hand raise is not visible in my screen. You can ask directly. Oh. Yes, because we have got only something around thirty-five people, so directly they can ask the question. Yeah. I think uh, we can conclude the session because there is no not much questions right now. Oh, okay. Okay. And, I think uh, we can conclude. And time is also. about one and a half hour okay 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 then we can arjun has raised the hand arjun tell me arjun um about the different uh, wavelengths hmm. which the james webb telescope can observe are there uh, different instruments to uh, detect different wavelengths or is it just a single instrument which can detect all the wavelengths single instrument it is not possible actually they have to use different this thing for radio waves or microwaves what you are seeing a dish antenna is there you know that is used for optical they have to go for visible they have to go for mirrors and for um, uh, this thing ultraviolet also they can very well use mirror so different equipments have to be used a single thing they some of course some places they can merge it also most probably mostly they may be using different uh, <coughs> sensors our different methods our different technologies for extracting the things okay arjun thank you sir welcome thank you sir i think it is time to conclude uh, okay. uh, sir there is one more question from shreya uh, sir uh, what shreya causes fractures in lens actually if you are going for a very big mirror the self weight it will give fracture the self weight the temperature variation and the even the tea glass if you use tea we pour tea and uh, show it in a cold water it will fracture temperature variation so a good number of reasons are there. self weight is the biggest reason actually self weight means when when if you take a glass or also 2 feet is okay 3 feet if you make it like this it will break actually so first is self weight then temperature variation temperature means can be going going while going towards coldness or hotness so they all can create fractures yes shreya is it okay hello that's it that's it okay, okay. that's all i think no more arjun, questions arjun raising the hand arjun come on welcome Arjun, may I put in unmute? Hello, sir. Can you hear uh, tell me? Tell me. Yes, yes. Very well. Very well, Arjun. Tell me. Um, the last question. Um, you told that space debris are mm. a huge problem to space telescopes. Space debris are problematic to space telescopes, but they can be controlled. Actually, the agency which is uh, managing, which is managing with the telescope, they will be taking care of it. Actually. And they have a separate unit, and uh, they will take. They will rule, track the major debris. Small debris are not problematic. They won't bother about thing. The major debris, they will be everything will be orbiting. Actually, they are not directly coming and hitting. The orbits of the major debris, which can create new troubles, will be tracked, and their positions are will be noted, and accordingly, the our the telescope or whatever satellite is there, it will be shifted. Or the orbit will be slightly shifted to protect it from the debris because he can't control the debris. And for telescopes in the ground, it is not a big problem actually. Okay, it may be a very rare and rare star. The rare some the meteorite may have crossing through the atmosphere come and hit it actually. Some meteors have seen after burn the residue after burning hits our coconut trees and all. and last year in tamil nadu one driver in an engineering college after parking his vehicle while coming out was hit and he was no more 
he expired you know he got no this thing killed in the spot by the hit of a car they are telling it is due to meteorite okay so that is very rare but the space we can control to the maximum level to the maximum is very maximum level there are units for that even iso is having a unit in demand for that and isa nasa everyone they are okay sir uh, if but by any chance uh, a medium size space debris hits the uh, telescope mirror if it is hitting me it's it's not it's finished actually if any chance if we we couldn't control we can we couldn't shift the orbit or if the uh, the debris is good enough to hit us actually then it is finished but such a thing has not happened so far so is there any coatings on the mirrors coatings coatings the can't help actually because the debris will be coming at a huge speed <laughs> so uh, if it is hitting means it's a problem but normally and they will identify and ship the orbit and they will manage it actually only that much thank you sir welcome welcome sir good actually and shaji albert sir i think we can control no yeah, no sir, hand raising sir you okay so i meet uh, i think i can stop the sharing that i should have done okay, okay. Yeah. now actually i can bring the view and we do babu to uh, my pinning also i can i can remove the pinning so everybody can do okay. the okay spotlight for everyone thank you shaji sir, sir. uh i would like to express our sincere thanks to the speaker for his wonderful presentation it was a really great experience it was really nice experience and for me it was very much informative and i am sure that all of you have the same experience uh, i thank all of the participants on behalf of uh, back to science society thank you thank you very much thank you we can conclude here sir. Oh, sure, sure. I'm really happy to see Shaji Albert after around twenty years or so. Uh, nine months have gone. Ah, yes, Jodhis Babu. I, so your face is also visible. Uh, seeing you, it's a happiness for me because uh, you are doing a wonderful work. I couldn't come and join you whenever you are doing a, a very good seminar or a lecture or a program and all. Now I am blogging for that. I am free. Other day I was not free. <laughs> I was doing only administrative work and then doing scientific work. That is my handicapness. and uh, very really great i can join you both days i can attend your programs or i can give uh, lectures in my way actually okay thank you thank, thank you sir we are very happy to hear from you thank you thank you so uh, we are ending the session thank you all okay